Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro, hope you're doing well, and in this video we're going to cover if statements in C Sharp. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Alright people, if statements. An if statement is a basic form of decision making. If some condition that we specify is true, we can execute a block of code. If it's not true, we can do something else entirely. So let's write a small program where we will ask a user to enter in their age. And depending on their age, we can write an if statement that checks to see if somebody is 18 years or older. Let's say that a user is signing up for a credit card and you have to be 18 years or older. So if their age is greater than or equal to 18, we will display a message that says, you're now signed up. If they're less than 18, we can do something else. So to write an if statement, we just write if, then parentheses to hold some sort of condition, which we would like to evaluate, followed by a set of parentheses. So if some condition that we set within the parentheses is true, we will execute this block of code. If it's not true, we skip over it entirely. So let's check to see if age is greater than or equal to 18. Then we will display something. Console.writeLine, you are now signed up. And let's try it. Please enter your age. Let's say that I'm 21, I hit enter. Boom, you are now signed up. Now what if I enter in an age that's less than 18? Let's say that I'm 12 years old and I'm trying to sign up for a credit card. Well, nothing appears to happen and that's normal. So if this condition evaluates to be true, we execute this block of code. If it's false, we skip over it entirely as if it never existed. Now we can take a different course of action. If our above condition is false, we can perform some other block of code. So let's display a message that says you must be 18 years or older to sign up. You must be 18 plus to sign up. So if this condition is true, we do this. If it's false, we do this. So let's try it again. Please enter your age. Let's say that I'm 12, I hit enter. You must be 18 plus to sign up. So if this is true, do this. If it's not true, do this. Now between the if and else statements, you can add an else if statement if there's more things that you want to check before reaching the else block. So the else block is kind of like a last resort if all of above statements evaluate to be false. Let's check to see if somebody's age is less than zero. Else if age is less than zero, then we will display a custom message such as you haven't been born yet. Please enter your age. I am negative 12 years old. You haven't been born yet. With these else if statements, you can add as many as you want between if and else. Let's add another. So I will copy what we have. Let's check to see if somebody's age is greater than 100. If it is, then we'll say, I don't know, you're too old to sign up. That's kind of mean, I guess, but it serves the purpose of this example. So you are too old to sign up. Now we're going to run into one issue. Okay, please enter your age. I am 101 years old. You are now signed up. Now, the reason that this block of code executed and not this one is that we're just going down in order starting from the top. Since age, which was 101, is technically greater than or equal to 18, this condition evaluated to be true, and we executed this block of code and skipped everything else after it and continued on with the rest of the program. So if we first want to check to see if somebody's age is greater than 100, we should probably put that within the if statement and check that first. Because age is technically greater than or equal to 18 if we set age to be 101. Else if we will check to see if age is greater than or equal to 18, then we just have to change these lines of text around. So you are too old to sign up. So the order of these if statements and else if statements does matter. And let's try it again. Okay, please enter your age. I am 101 years old. You are too old to sign up. All right, now in this next example, let's ask a user for their name instead of their age. Let's change int age to string name. And we do not need to convert this because it's already a string. So to check to see if somebody does not enter in some user input, we can check to see if our variable name equals an empty set of quotes. So this is an empty string. Now, the reason that we're using two equal signs is that this is a comparison operator. If you just use one, that is an assignment operator. C Sharp thinks you're attempting to assign name with an empty string. So we're comparing if these two are equal. So that's why we use double equals. 
So if name is equal to an empty string, that means that somebody skipped over entering in some user input. So let's yell at them. You did not enter your name. So if our name is not empty, we can display maybe hello, whatever the user's name is. So hello plus name. And let's try it. Okay, please enter your name. I'm just going to hit enter. You did not enter your name. Let's run this again and take it seriously this time. Please enter your name, bro, hello, bro. Now there's another way in which we could write this. So instead of using this double equal sign, we can use exclamation point equal sign. That means not equals. If name does not equal an empty string, then we will display hello name. Else we will display you did not enter your name. So we're checking to see if name is not equal to an empty string. And if that's true, display hello name. Okay, please enter your name. I'll hit enter. You did not enter your name. Let's try it again. Please enter your name, bro. Hello, bro. All right, everybody, those are if statements. They're a very basic form of decision making. We can check to see if some condition is true. If it is true, then we can do something. If not, we can do something else. So if you would like a copy of both examples from this video, I will post that code to the comment section down below. And well, those are if statements in C-sharp.